Today on American Gladiators, our tournament of champions begins, the semifinals. The men's competition will be supercharged. Clearwater, Florida's rough, tough guide, Julius. He'll take on the kid from Wilkinsburg, Pennsylvania, Daniel Cunningham. Guy Deulius, a Tasmanian devil. My whole life people have been telling me you can't do this, you can't do that. Well, my whole life I've been fooling them. And today, we'll do it again. Daniel Cunningham, a daredevil with nerves of steel. Every once in a while, you get a chance to show the world what you're made of, and this is the chance. The women promise to light up the sky as well. 35-year-old Debbie Rogers versus athletic, determined Adrian Sullivan. It's a battle of civil servants. Debbie, a firefighter from Olympia, Washington, versus Adrian, a police officer from Covington, Georgia. Let the games begin. Welcome to Gladiator Arena. Today, our Tournament of Champions begins. A pair of semifinal matches, the first step in determining who will carry home the Gladiator Crystal. Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Adamley. Glad you could join us. As four elite contenders, the ones who showed best in our preliminary rounds, will test themselves yet again against the American Gladiators, who at this very moment are preparing themselves for the challenge ahead. Lisa's with them in the locker room. Thanks, Mike. Well, Gladiators, this is it for the contenders. Do or die time. Final four weekend. We know the contenders are ready. I want to know, are the Gladiators ready? Well, you know, Lisa, every year the contenders get to the semifinals, and they think they're tougher than tough. And, hey, it's just another day for us. Another day at the office. Nitro, what do you think? It's just another day, like I said. I don't even know these people's names. You can't get personal. It's about doing your job. You got the joust, you got the pyramid, you got whatever you have to do, and you just go through it, and they're just like a blur to you. Matter of fact, they're so inconsequential, I'm more worried about my hair. Am I having a good hair day today? You're having an absolute good hair day. How about me? My good hair day. Good hair day. You guys are having a great hair day. That's what's important. That's what's important. Today. That's what's important, Mike. Back to you in the arena. What's important to our contenders, Lisa? Today's winners will take home. $10,000 plus advance to the Grand Championship. We'll start things off round one, pyramid for the men. Guy Deulius, he is all set to go. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Guy, 30 years old, 5'8", 195, a karate and physical education teacher from Clearwater, Florida. His opponent, Daniel Cunningham, 24 years old, 5'8", 150, the cartoonist from Wilkinsburg, Pennsylvania. Atop the pyramid, Saber and Laser, there they are, set to pounce on our two contenders here in the semifinals. The first man to the top in 60 seconds or less will earn 10 points, which would be a great way to start their day. Contenders ready! Gladiators ready! DC, Daniel Cunningham, quick, elusive, but Saber still right in front of him. Now he ducks the other way. Guy in hand-to-hand -hand combat with Laser. And look at this, Dan Cunningham sneaks by Sabre, but Sabre's got a hold of him right at the very last second. DC going all the way back down. Guy now working hard, looking for some kind of way to get away from Laser. He pulls Laser down, takes Sabre with him. Look at this. We've got 15 seconds less. Deulius gets the 10. Cunningham also makes it up. He gets five. A 10-5 proposition for the contenders. Laser Saber can't believe it. Guy makes it up in 34 seconds. Daniel Cunningham in 38. What a way to start this tournament of champions. Well, this is so fun to be up here with you guys. I understand why you wanted to get here, Guy. You lost to Laser last time, but you weren't going to let it happen twice. No, I wasn't going to let it happen twice. Last time he, he brutalized me. This time I just brought it to him. We went man to man, and I won today. Daniel, you beat Hawk last time. You ended up with 10 that time. You got five today, but yeah. you got to the top. Yeah, I got to the top. Saber's strong, man. I just had to utilize his strength and my speed, and 
I got up. Yeah, I, those guys, the gladiators were shaking their heads. They can't believe it. Nice yeah. start, guys. Thank you very much. He's fast to be a big guy, too. <laughs> he is. All right. Let's go down. <laughs> Come on, Sabre. You just did it. Let it out. Get rid of the frustration. Ah! What yeah. happened up there, man? We have our travel zones, and he was using his man like in, in basketball, a screen. He was using it for a screen. I tried to cut under the screen. As soon as I cut under the screen, the laser fell from him and got me. And before you know it, they rushed into the top. But you kind of expected this laser. I mean, the Tournament of Champions, the semifinal rounds, these guys are the best of the best. Oh, yeah, we're, we're you know, it's down to the best of the best. This is the first time in uh, two years on this uh, event here that uh, two guys have ever made it. You got to work together, and uh, they got lucky. Well, let's find out if luck is a lady. The women set to climb the pyramid. Adrian Sullivan and Debbie Rogers, their tail of the take. Debbie, 35 years old, 5'5", 135. The firefighters we mentioned from Olympia, Washington. Adrian, 5'6", 145, 26 years old. A police officer, as we mentioned, from Covington, Georgia. The gladiators at top the pyramid are Jazz and Zap. Adrian Sullivan. Four tears from the top. Zap's got her. Zap trying to hold on to her. Desperately. By one arm, Jazz has got a hold of Debbie Rogers. 30 seconds remain. And both contenders go down. Adrian Sullivan, however, still on her feet. Zap trying to chase her down. But the police officer from Covington, Georgia, hits the center. She's got the 10. She's on the scoreboard first here in our semifinals. Debbie, meanwhile, a terrific struggle with Jazz. Time winding down and Debbie running out of juice. Time expires, that's it, but Adrian Sullivan makes it to the top of the pyramid and she takes the early 10-0 lead. My lesson from the last time was to get close to him. Don't spend too much time wrestling. When um, Zap and I finally went down, I just made up my mind I wasn't going to lose precious seconds like, like I did with Zap, and it paid off. It sure did. As a matter of fact, Zap's so impressed, she gives Adrian the high five. Nicely done. Adrian dedicating her performance today to her late brother, Melvin, who was tragically murdered two years ago. Each time she wins, Adrian salutes her brother. His death has given her a different outlook on life. I don't think all the money in the world could replace what I have now. I wouldn't want it because uh, it's, it's great to, to have, your, have good health, have great opportunities. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Our Tournament of Champions continues the semifinal round, event number two, it's tug of war. God Ulias, the karate and physical education teacher from Clearwater, Florida, has a 10-5 lead on Daniel Cunningham. He's got the power, he's got the determination. His nickname, the Tasmanian Devil, you can see the tattoo on his left arm. He's also a motivational speaker, but above all, a competitor. I like to compete against other people that are the best of their game because it brings the best out in myself. And that's what you should do. You shouldn't go for the guy that you know you can beat. You should always try to shoot for the best guy because that'll bring the best out in you. And Guy, you've drawn one of the best, Laser. Once again, the tug of war. The contender has 30 seconds to pull the rope out of the Gladiator's hands or use it to pull him off the platform. That would be worth 10 points. If the red ribbon there you see is at Guy's side of the midline after the 30 seconds expires, he'll get five. Look at Laser get the draw and working hard. He's got the ribbon on his side. Deulius in huge trouble and down he goes. Seven second victory for Laser. Laser again will do the honors for the Glads in tug of war. He's got the eye of the tiger. Daniel Cunningham now has a chance to take the lead. He trails Guy Deulius by five coming into the tug. He doesn't look like much, but he's got quickness. He's got a lot of confidence, and sometimes that's all you need. This one pretty good right now, but Laser reeling him in, almost pulled himself off the platform, but did manage to grab that rope 
out of DC's hands. Two victories in a row for Laser. That one in eight seconds. So Guy Deulius and Daniel Cunningham come away empty in tug of war. You know, oftentimes we talk here on Gladiators about the contenders' determination and their desire to succeed, but there's some pressure on you guys as well, isn't there, Laser? Yeah, there is, Mike. Uh, you know, we're not we're expected, and I think we take it into ourselves that uh, we're supposed to win every event, and if we don't, uh, you know, we got a lot of fans that uh, look at us like, hey, you're the Gladiators, you're supposed to win, but I know when I'm up there, I'm going to win, and that's all there is to it, Mike. It's the women's turn to tug, and the oldest contender here in our semifinals is up first. Debbie Rogers not only had to overcome a contender to get here. I'm excited, and I'm hot, and this is the best. But as a kid, she suffered from rheumatoid juvenile arthritis that nearly left her a cripple. If that wasn't bad enough, she was almost killed by a pit bull while diving into a pool. Now, Debbie puts her life on a line as a firefighter. And she's also a pretty good baseball player. She almost made the Silver Bullets woman's team. First professional female baseball team going against men. Probably will never happen again. They found 47 women, and we went to spring training camp in Orlando, Florida, and I made it to the second round, and then I came home. Well, you've made it to our second round, our semifinals, Debbie. Let's see how you do against Sky. The tug is on. Debbie Rogers working hard. How about this woman, 35 years old. Holding her own against Mighty Sky, trying to reel her in. Under 10 seconds, hang on, Debbie. Sky's got the red ribbon to her side of the midline. That's the way it ends. Debbie won't get the victory, but she gets Sky's respect. An intense tug. Sky got the victory, but tonight she'll have rope burns and bad dreams. Well, last season and certainly this year, Sky has become a contender's nightmare. Her record in each and every event superb, and now it's Adrian Sullivan's turn. The police officer from Covington, Georgia. She's got a 10-0 lead. She could pad that lead with a victory or a draw here. Ready. 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 Look at Sky looking at the whistle. Again, responding to the opening bell, the opening whistle key. And Adrian Sullivan has got that platform rock backwards in her direction she's got the advantage she is reeling sky in at least for the moment sky holding on by one hand now sky coming back with one hand she's doing it she's got the platform rocked back in her direction adrian was on the brink of victory now the brink of defeat four seconds remain adrian's got that red ribbon on her side of the midline yes larry thompson right there that is five points for Adrian Sullivan in a great, great time. And a clutch performance as well. Adrian not aware of how much time was left on the clock. Watch that red ribbon. Look at the midline. Where is it? As time expires, it's on Adrian's side. She gets the five. Adrian, that went just about as planned. You wanted to get the first tug, but what a battle. Oh, yeah. I thought I was going to pull it off there for a second. But somehow she started pulling, and I thought I was going to go off the front end of it. But I held on good. Adrian hanging on, and we keep on keeping on. Snap back around the corner. <laughs> Our Tournament of Champions continues. Event number three, men snap back. Daniel Cunningham, but look at him. He trails Guy Deulius, 10-5 coming in. He draws Saber this time around. Guy. Wearing a neck brace for precautionary purposes. And let's go back to his preliminary round match against Nitro. This is the guy he draws here. Guy set a snapback record with 17 points, scored at will. Nitro wasn't quite prepared for this new event, but he will be this time around. 45 seconds in snap back. Contenders will try to grab either the blue or red scoring markers attached from the ceiling. The blue ones were three, the reds two. Contenders ready! 
But again, what makes this event so difficult, those bungee cords, forward progress almost impossible, certainly at the latter stages of this match. DC, the first on the scoreboard. Daniel takes a big shot from Saber, but recoils and bounces back. He's got a red, but he dropped it. Guy going down hard after that shot from Nitro. 10 seconds remain. And this is the time <laughs> in snapback where it feels like you have a refrigerator on your back. That is it. The bungee cores pulling everybody back to start. Dan wins at 8-6. Nitro gets a measure of revenge. And watch what happened with five seconds left. DC doing the alley-oop up and over Sabre. Daniel, as we mentioned, a cartoonist who, as you might expect, likes to sketch, especially gladiators. He's also a daredevil who showed his daredevil style in his prelim during assault. But Daniel has higher hopes than just dodging tennis balls. My ultimate fantasy is to uh, do things I put my mind to and accomplish it. And to skydive at the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> Sucker, you crazy. And Adrian Sullivan is crazy about this event. She has the necessary skills to do well in snapback, especially that lower body strength, leg drive. She draws Siren. Debbie Rogers attached to a bungee cord as well, and she will have to do battle with Zap. Adrian with the 15 nothing lead coming in. Time for Debbie to get busy. And Debbie's got the first score. She's got another one as Adrian gets a red marker back to her scoring bid. Debbie and Adrian giving Zap and Siren a workout they won't forget. 20 seconds remain, and Debbie's got a blue scoring marker. The blue scoring markers are seven feet off the ground. The red one's six and a half feet, so obviously that they're worth more. Adrian almost had a chance there. This game's so tantalizing in many respects because just when you think you've got a score, that bungee cord pulls you back to home base. And time expires. Let's total it up. Both Adrian and Debbie do well. Adrian wins at 8-7, but some very important points for Debbie Rogers. Debbie, seven big points. You needed to get on the board. I needed points bad. That was seven good ones. <laughs> Hard points. You trail 23-7. Are you concerned at this point? No. <laughs> Too should early. I, should I be? <laughs> no, too early. Right, too All early. Right. Good attitude, Deb. Round four next, the wall. It's been done before, but not that often. Our 32-foot wall, the next event for our men contenders here in this Tournament of Champions semifinal round. Guy Deulius will have Turbo breathing down his neck. Spider-Man. Peter Parker got a new name. Spider-Man got a new name. <laughs> it's Daniel <Yeah>. Cunningham. <laughs> yeah. And let's see if Laser can pull the Spider-Man off the wall. He's got 60 seconds to get the top to earn 10 points. So many times we have seen Turbo actually reach the midway point of the wall before the contender does and pull him off. And look at Laser working hard. Moving in on Daniel Cunningham. He's got another victory, does Laser. Dewey is looking great, but Turbo is starting to close in now. Guy needs to get a little higher or it's going to be trouble. And it is trouble. Turbo's got a shoe. Guy trying to kick away. He has, at least momentarily. Turbo will not give up. If Guy can get his left hand on that final peg, he almost had it. Couldn't do it. But a great race up the wall. Daniel Cunningham, Guy Deulius, no points. Mighty close. close. The very top one, Kern, I would have made it. See how it's coming down now? Oh, okay, yeah, we'll get, we'll get out. Good job. 
Well, let's see. Let's take a look at the replay and see what Guy's undoing was. Not so much turbo, but right here, watch that grip. It actually moves, and down he goes. Okay, Guy, you're a little steamed here. What happened up there? Yeah, I'm pretty hot. Uh, well, I got up to the top, the last rock, before you pull yourself up over the wall. Uh, turbo grabbed a hold of my foot. I shook him loose, went to commit for the wall to grab a hold of the wall, and the rock turned upside down on me. I slipped down to the next level, tried again. By then, he recovered, grabbed my foot. I had no handhold to grab a hold because the rock was upside down. So that so was he it. Pulled me off. It was over. Well, I guess you got a break. Yeah, I got a break. He, he was flying. Um, it's very unfortunate for him that this had to happen, but when you're involved in sports and athletics, there's going to be a whole lot of unforeseen obstacles out in front of you. Not just me, but it's going to be the wall, too. Unfortunately, it snuck up and grabbed him. And that's exactly what happened. The wall now awaits our women. Yeah. Eat it up, Donna. I eat it up. <laughs> Siren and Adrian comparing guns. Debbie Rogers. Washington. Guarantee you, she's not giving any pointers Get to ice. Ready. Gladiators, ready. Here we go. Adrian on the left. Debbie on the right. The two gladiators on the outside part of the wall. They'll cross over momentarily in an attempt to pull our contenders down. Ice and Siren, great climbers. Ice coming very close now to Debbie Rogers. Has her right arm. Debbie sh just shrugs it off, and Ice goes down. She's allowed to continue. But Debbie falls off, and that's the end of her run. Adrian Sullivan, however, looking strong. Here comes Siren moving in. Siren's got an ankle hold, and there goes the rest of the body. So what looked to be so promising early on for our two contenders turns into no points here on the wall. And after four rounds, the women's score remains the same, 23-7. Next up, contenders will do that swing thing. Hang tough. And a look at the man in our ring game. It is Turbo. He has only been beaten once in his entire gladiator career in this event and vows not to be beaten here in the Tournament of Champions. First up for the contenders, Daniel Cunningham, currently trailing Guy Diulia 16-13 going into this event. Has 60 seconds to cross this grid of 50 rings. If he can do it, he'll get 10 points. If he can hang tough, that is go the distance, last the entire 60 without being pulled off by Turbo. He's got five and a draw. It won't be easy. Contender ready! Gladiator ready! He's a daredevil, Daniel Cunningham is. His goal in life to one day skydive in the Bermuda Triangle. And one of his greatest desires coming on to this show was to take on Turbo in any event. Well, he's got him here and hang tough and looking good early on but Turbo closing in. Oh, he's got another ring. He took a big chance momentarily getting by Turbo. He needs to regain some momentum and get another ring, but right now he's in huge trouble. <laughs> Somehow he's managing to have a smile on his face. Both men hanging on by one ring. Now Turbo's got two. So close yet so far. 20 seconds remain. Turbo trying to get a some kind of hold on Daniel Cunningham, but Cunningham's got a hold on another ring. Here he goes. He's got it. Whoa, man. <laughs> hey. Turbo just nods his head. You're the man. You're the man. <laughs> and pulls him off the tower. And with tongue hanging out a la Michael Jordan, Daniel Cunningham sends Turbo to the only the second defeat of his career. And there's that tongue wagon. Daniel, you wanted Turbo and you got him. Literally, you got him. Yeah, I, I got him, but it was hard work. I needed the points. He was there. I had to try something. I had to lunch for that, that um, ring and it was worth it. It was worth it. You said you're a hero. You're his hero. Turbo and he got this you just barely. Here. That's right. When he made that dive for it, I said in my mind, I'm going, he's history. It's just all about killing him now. I don't know how he did it or I, I gotta see this on tape. That was 
That was surprising. <laughs> Huge 10 points. Way to go, Daniel. <laughs> Guy Diulia is still looking a little irritated. He thought he should have had some kind of points in the wall. But he better forget about that and think about now. Now being hanged tough in his turn. He's got Turbo again here, the same man who pulled him off the wall. His girlfriend Sherry Ran rooting the Taz on. Contender ready! Gladiator ready! Guy now on his way. And Turbo looking for redemption. Guy very powerfully built and very comfortable here on the rings. Now has to track back. But at some point during this match, he has to make a forward movement. He has to make progress. Turbo's got that leg lock on him. Guy swaying right into him. Unless he's got superhuman strength, Guy Diuli is going down. He did go down. Turbo gets the job done in 38 seconds and hang tough. No points there. But give the Tasmanian Devil credit for surviving that leg whip there. Turbo just trying to get the scissors lock and did. One out of two is not the percentage I want, but hey. Chalking up. Ready to get a grip here on our ring game. Hank Tough, it's Ice Ice Baby. First up for the contenders, Debbie Rogers, the firefighter from Olympia, Washington, currently trailing Adrian Sullivan 23-7, coming in to Hank Tough. We've documented get Debbie's ready. stories many times. The bout with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis she had as a two-year-old, how she had to wear braces for nearly a year, a very painful experience. Hoping to make Hank Tough a pleasant experience. So far, so good, but there's Ice. Debbie swaying right into the clutches of Ice's powerful legs. And now it's a matter of time. Ice knows it. And down goes Debbie Rogers. Missed opportunity for the firefighter from Olympia, Washington to score points. Hard to blame her though. Ice gets those legs wrapped around a contender. It's usually all over and here it was. Up next, Adrian Sullivan. Currently working on her Bachelor of Arts degree at Georgia State and one day wants to become a member of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI. Doing some pretty nice detective work up here on the rings, trying to find the escape route from ice. It's amazing to me how these contenders manage to smile up there. <laughs> my life would be passing before my eyes. Adrian has to circle back now, ice closing in. She's gonna take a different tact, crossing over on this grid of rings. About 20 seconds remain. And again, she's gonna make some kind of forward movement. Right now, it's a matter of survival. Those rings moving every which way up there. Time winding down. Neither woman able to get much in the way of momentum and rhythm in that particular match of Hang Tough, but give Adrian Sullivan five for the draw. Not an artistic success for Adrian Sullivan, but she continues to roll. Up next, Powerball. A look at the Gladiator Crystal. It is coveted by all four of our semi-finalists who hope to win it in the Tournament of Champions. On we go, round six, event number six, Powerball. It's crunch time here. A look at Adrian Sullivan coming in after five events, has a 28-7 lead over Debbie Rogers, the police officer from Covington, Georgia, and there's Debbie, the firefighter from Olympia, Washington. 
do or die time for her. Our three gladiators, there they are, in the center of this Powerball surface, Ice, Jazz, and Scott. Contenders have 45 seconds. Object real simple, just score as many times as you can, but score in that center cylinder, it's worth three. Outer cylinder goals are worth two. Powerball is brought to you by Coca-Cola Classic. Always the real thing, always Coca-Cola. Debbie Rogers getting one past Sky. Adrian with the big spin move past Jazz to score. All tied up, one goal apiece, but Adrian breaks that tie, breaking Ice's tackle. Debbie looking for running room and stepped out of bounds. It wouldn't have counted anyway had she made it. That one, she gets knocked out of bounds by Jazz. Again, Adrian working hard for a goal. Debbie gets one. Boy, is she tough, and so is Adrian for that matter. Under 10 seconds now. Both contenders extremely winded. Time for one more, maybe. Uh, that one rolls off the cylinder, and that will do it. The 45 seconds has expired. Give him a hand. Nice work by Adrian Sullivan and Debbie Rogers. And the police officer from Covington, Georgia, continues to roll. Well, Adrian wins Powerball 6-2 to take a 35-9 lead, and that puts you in kind of a tough spot going into the Eliminator. Your thoughts right now, and is that something that, that you can overcome? Well, we'll just see when it happens. I'm just going to do my best at the Eliminator. This girl wins. You know, 35 is, is young for a firefighter, for anything, but as a contender here in Gladiator Arena, it's kind of tough. Does that, you ever let that bother you? No, I'm really 22, but my <laughs> age is 35. Adrian, I know you two didn't meet each other until you came to Gladiator Arena, but has there been some kind of like friendly rivalry, you being a police officer, her being a firefighter? Oh, definitely, definitely. We were back in the trailer talking about the different um, off days we have. I told I envy her. I heard greatly. We're well, about due for an off day. Both of you, congratulations and good luck going into the Eliminator. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Sally, she shakes, she bakes, and she makes the gladiators quake. Nice job. Men's crunch time, they also will go at it in Powerball. Is this the best show in the world or what? I am very happy to be here. Quite a contrast, his attitude going in as opposed to Guy Deulis's. He's all business. Come on, guys, it's a semifinals, baby. We're powerball action. Throw the boom on somebody. Yeah. Hawk Saber Nitro ready to pump up the volume. The Tasmanian Devil, Guy Deulis, he tried out twice before for American Gladiators, never made it. Tried out again this year, and it was a charm. But that first goal does not go in, it rolled off the cylinder. Guy stays in bound this time, and what an effort to get the three in the center cylinder. All out effort by God Elias. Daniel Cunningham kind of shaking and baking, kind of making all kinds of moves that Saber is not going for. Once your knee touches, it doesn't count, it doesn't score. And they were so busy about God Elias that Dan went unmolested. This time he gets the double team. Guy scored in that other cylinder. It is wild out there. We're under 10 seconds now. Guy, oh yeah, how did he get that one? He beat the double team of Saber and Nitro. Well, that was some kind of effort by God Julius. He trailed by seven going in and he helped his cause. out there guys that was wild guy you wanted this so badly and it showed I need some points that's for sure and I sacrificed my body for it well you did speaking of that let's take a look at that highlight you got nitro you took him right down the middle tell me what you were doing here right here I just tried to do a move uh, Jude it around almost lost my balance cut back I needed wow. it I needed slam it. slam dunk that was beautiful but I'll tell you what nitro he got you there but you got him here when everyone gets thirds at one time or another, you know my saying is, is when I'm good, I'm good, and when I'm bad, I'm even better, baby. <laughs> and you were oh so bad right there. Guys, thanks for giving us such a great right. show. Thanks. Hey, it's all within part of the competition. He knows as well as I know, is when that whistle goes, we're going 100%. After the whistle's done, I can walk up to him and give him a chest bump, just like that. That's what it's about, baby. Thanks, guys. <laughs>
And next week, you'll see more of the same as our semifinals continue. Unpredictable Kyler Storm versus the Rage and Cajun Troy LeBlanc. And powerful Susan Falvey goes after Liz Raglan. You won't want to miss it. How well do you know your gladiators? Gladiators then and now. Here he was at birth, the 4th of July, 1966. Later at four years old. As a model at 14. Later a forward at St. Xavier High School in Kentucky. He went on to play football at Cornell. Once in a while, you could see him in drag. <laughs> Come on out here and try to get through here if you think you can, no way. In just a few moments, two spots for our grand championship will be decided in the Eliminator Final. For the women, police officer Adrian Sullivan is the one to beat. Her consistent work through six rounds has earned her a 12.5 second head start margin. But firefighter Debbie Rogers had the faster time in the Eliminator race in her preliminary round. She is still very much a threat to win the whole thing. She's with Lisa at the start line. Debbie, you've had kind of an off day today, but your Eliminator time is 27 seconds better than Adrian's. That's got to give you some confidence. Is that right? That's right. That's totally awesome. That's great. Are you ready? I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's go for it. Let's go. Thanks. Hard not to fall in love with Debbie's enthusiasm. And the Eliminator is brought to you by Twix Cookie Bars. It's one great snack after another. Twix. Ready? Here we go once again. The police officer, Adrian Sullivan, on the left, getting that huge 12 and a half second head start. It's not often that our contenders come from behind from such a deficit, but it has happened. And Debbie Rogers, certainly aerobically capable to do that. But Adrian looking strong so far. Down the slide she comes. Oh, and off the handbike she goes. She will be assessed a 10-second penalty down there. This could be the break that Debbie Rogers needed. But again, Adrian's lead so significant that she is back up after being detained for 10 seconds, and now we'll finish the rest of this race. Debbie's still far behind. Adrian now safely across the cylinders. Oh, down she goes. Debbie Rogers working hard. At the age of two, she had juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Her entire body covered with braces for nearly a year. Extremely painful experience. This eliminator, nothing compared to that. But right now, it is Adrian Sullivan leading the way. She is not faltering. Here she goes. Over the plexiglass wall. Now only the treadmill remains. Debbie Rogers now coming down the zip line. The only way she can win is if Adrian falters on the treadmill. She does not. What a capper to a great, great athletic day for Adrian Sullivan and her time much better than the prelims. One minute and 35 seconds. Adrian Sullivan, $10,000 richer, and yes, she has a spot in the Grand Championship. And the gallant 35-year-old firefighter from Olympia, Washington finally finishes. She had a great day as well, Debbie Rogers, but Adrian Sullivan gets the gold medal, gets the prize money, and right now she's with Lisa Miloski. Well, way to go, Adrian. You're headed to the championship. That's right, I'm going, I'm there. What was going through your mind as you're getting through that eliminator, especially after you faltered there, after you dropped off the what? hand? From the very beginning, the hand bike was my problem. Uh, my strategy throughout the whole competition was to get enough points so that if I did fall off, I have enough time to Regroup. redeem myself. Yeah, there redeem myself and come through with victory. So what are you gonna do with the ten thousand bucks? My buy a truck. Ooh. Where I live, I have no sanitation. I have to put all my trash in my car and go to the nearest dumpster. Well, this will help. This will help. All right. Big time. All right, well, thank thanks you. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Adrian, make sure it's one of those good-looking, big, hot trucks. Another one, number two. Number two. 
In the men's race, Dan Cunningham's 25-23 lead over Guy Deulius gives the cartoonist a one-second head start. As we know by now, in the Eliminator, that is barely peanuts. This race should be mighty, mighty close. Now you've had a very emotional day. Kind of a downer on the wall. You powered back in Powerball. I want to know if you have a left enough left in you to get through this eliminator. Yeah, I'll never give up. Um, we got to quit meeting like this. I'd like to be starting off first someday. Um, but just sit over there by the blue and I'll see you at the end. All right, Guy, I'll see you there. The one thing working in Guy to Ulias's favor in his preliminary round match when he beat Smiley Elbor, he turned in the fastest eliminator time of all of our contenders, one minute and six seconds. By contrast, Dan's best time, 112.06. On course for the Gladiators, our penalty enforcers, there they are, Saber and Turbo. Should the men fall off the hand bike, they will be detained in a penalty pit for seven seconds. Ready? The first test for our two contenders, the Versa Climber. It's the ultimate total body workout and the number one fitness choice of the American Gladiators. And look at Guy Deolius go, powering his way up the Versa Climber. He has quickly erased that deficit he faced. You can see why he was the fastest of our contenders. This guy is fit. 30 years old, a karate and physical education teacher from Clearwater, Florida, running away from Daniel Cunningham. Guy, the first to reach the zip line. Here's a guy who tried out for the show on two separate occasions and failed both times. Decided this year he'd try a third time. He made it, and he is very close to going on to the Grand Championship. Has he spent everything he had, however, on the treadmill? Has he? Uh-oh, this is the break that DC needs. Daniel Cunningham doesn't falter. Uh, come from behind victory, Dan Cunningham punches, punches his right fist right through the barrier and beats a stun, God Elias. His time. 106.25, and that becomes the fastest time we have had this year for the men in the Eliminator. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Dan Cunningham will go on to meet either Kyler Storm or Troy LeBlanc. Get up your hair. Good job, buddy. Good job. The come from behind finish one more time. Daniel. <laughs> hey, congratulations. Nice, nice going. Did you have a doubt in your mind there at some point? On that, on that burst of clamor, which is alien to me, that's hard. And then that, after that, I just had to do it. I seen guy come down, and that's when I had to give him my all. Your plans for the $10,000? I don't know, probably give a little something to my mom, help my mom out, get a, get a truck or something, I don't know. When you saw a guy lying on the treadmill, what was going through your mind? Man, it's, when, he, when he was lying on the treadmill, it was time to go. <laughs> get that breath and boom! And it worked. Yeah. Way to go, congratulations. Thank you. All right. And Daniel Cunningham also moves Woo! one step closer to emulating his idol, last year's grand champion, Wesley Two Scoops Berry. He's on his way. And all of our contenders will receive Versa Climbers, the number one fitness choice of the American Gladiators. For Lisa Malosky, I'm Mike Adamley. See you again next week on the American Gladiators.